Okay, so here we are. We're back uh, Wednesday. Welcome everyone to Facebook Live uh, Study Hall uh, on a WSCT Tasting Note. Um, sorry about last Wednesday when we had a little bit of technical uh, issues, but we've resolved all those and we're really happy to have Monica back uh, with us today to talk, uh, take us through actually uh, a tasting note for, and I'm not going to reveal what it is, so I'll actually just hand it on over to you, Monica, and have you, uh, you start, start talking. How's that? Okay. Here well, we go. Well, so what we're going to taste today, it's a white still wine, and we're going to discuss it at level three. So um, the tasting notes on level three will be preparing you to take the exam for those who are taking exam with us. Or first, the exam will take place on June 21st. So uh, I hope you are all getting ready, getting prepared and studying, and I hope this will walk you through uh, uh, the studies and will help you out in your preparation if uh, you're working on your tasting notes and you're working on your tasting technique. So we're diving in, wine still wine. What do we start with? It's the appearance. So I'm having a glass of wine in front of me and I will start with appearance. How do I do that? What do I look for? I want you to take a note with me or just the best way to do it is to, to write your notes on the paper to, to come to the conclusion. But if you um, don't have it, uh, just uh, uh, look at the uh, screen. We'll try to show you the notes later on if that will be possible. But um, let's go through appearance. So first things you want to start with when you sit down at your exam, and I'm going to give you a few tips for the exam. First thing is look at your wine and smell your wines. So that's number one. Uh, you will have a white and a red. Be careful and make sure that your white wine is a dry wine. If the um, nose shows you that this may not be a sweet, the dry wine, and it is a sweet wine, make sure you taste your red before your white. So if you taste the sweet wines, uh, sweet wine before your red wine, it will affect your palate. So make sure you don't make that mistake. So first. You started with assessing what kind of wine do you have in a glass. Then the next uh, uh, step will be the appearance. So you're going to appearance and you're looking at the clarity. How do you look like your glass? You want to look from the base of your glass to the top of your glass looking through the glass. So if you take a look, I'm looking through the glass um, just like that and I'm assessing this very part of a wine, I'm looking at the core. My, the most important part is the deeper, deepest, darkest part uh, of wine, and I want to see at this point if this wine is clear or hazy. That will give me a, a piece of information. If it's hazy, then I'm going to ask myself a question, is this wine faulty? However, at the level three examination, you don't really have to worry about that. We will uh, check the wines before and you will have a example of a perfect, uh, perfect wine in a perfect condition. So this wine is clear. Then we're moving on to intensity. And intensity is the place where you're going to get a point at the examination. So when you're looking at the intensity of the color, you want to assess your color from the core, from that middle deep, um, uh, deep color part to the rim. You want to see if there's a color variation. If, um, if the uh, color is uh, watery, on the outside. If you see quite a bit of that water rim, you will see a pale color. If you see the color going through or from the car to the rim, you will call it a deep color. So this is a medium intensity wine that I have in my glass. The next step is its color itself. And for white wines, we have choices. Lemon green, lemon, gold, amber, and brown. 
And how do you see the difference? So let's say lemon is your base color, right? We don't use straw in WCT um, simply because if you look at the, at the whole world and you ask people around the world, what is a straw uh, looking like? What's the color? What's the shape? Everybody sees a slightly different color of uh, yellow. So if I ask you, Take a look, imagine this is a ripe lemon that I have in front of me. Most of you see a like color, therefore we're going to discuss it as lemon. So lemon with a little bit of green tinge to it, um, that often indicates youth, it will be lemon green, but lemon with a little bit of orange into the color, it will indicate gold. Then that gold, when it has a little more brown, the, the lemon with a little more brown shade to it will be amber. And then at uh, often at the end of wine, for still wines, we'll see the brown color. But there are certain uh, styles of wines where the brown, brown color will be an indication of a style and a winemaking technique. So the wine that I have in a glass is gold. So this is a medium gold. And those are the two points that you're going to have for the appearance when you're taking your examination. So then from here, you're moving to uh, other observations. Um, and uh, although uh, you will not be getting the point for it, you may want to um, you may want to look into it because it makes your note really full. It gives us information that you do understand the wine. This is a, an important uh, part. You want to check if there is a deposit, for example, um, if there is there are some bubbles that may uh, shouldn't be there for it. Uh, for example, maybe the wine was re uh, went through refermentation and it was most meant to be a still wine, but it's now fermenting. So it will talk, well, what you can see on the uh, other observation, it will talk about the um, uh, condition of your wine uh, at this very moment. Uh, Often we're talking a word of wine about legs and tears, um, and uh, this uh, in different languages that this mean means basically the same. But that will be referring to uh, to viscosity, and that will be referring to level of sugar over alcohol. However, it uh, the way the legs forms it's actually uh, also re related to how your glass was clean, what's the surface um, uh, of the Glass. So um, this is also the reason why we're not giving you points for that. It isn't valid information though, if you want to make that observation, but there are so many things that can influence how the um, legs or tears are going to show up on your, in your glass. Therefore, we're not uh, awarding it a point. So from appearance, we're going to move to the nose. And now what I would like you to do, I would like you to swallow the glass if you have one in front of you and put your nose deep inside of a glass. You can even put your nose against the rim. But before you do that, I want you to take a slow motion uh, movement from here to here and see where are you starting to smell the aromas? Because that will be important for our intensity. Um, and uh, the place where you're starting to smell the aromas will indicate how intense is the note. But let's start in, start in the order and let's start with condition. So is this wine, is this aroma clean or unclean? Again, this is our second checkpoint. Uh, for checking if this wine is faulty. Um, there are several wine faults that you can um, that you can uh, find in the wine, which again at level three you will get the uh, perfect example of the style of the wine, but this could possibly uh, be a cork taint. And uh, I'll give you a tip how to work with a cork thing that uh, a colleague of mine taught me uh, years ago when I was preparing and studying um, for my level of three. Um, and back in the day, I was not able to, to figure out how do I find that cork thing, which smells like wet cardboard. So uh, one day he identified a uh, the cork taint in the wine, and he gave me the cork that was that that came with the bottle. Well, that cork taint was, was uh, 
quite pronounced on the nose. And what he told me, hey, put this in your pocket. And every time you touch your pocket, pick up that cork and smell it. Smell it again and again and again. It took me one day to log in that aroma and uh, I wouldn't miss uh, the cork taint uh, afterwards. So th this could be a tip if you're still struggling on how, uh, on how to recognize the cork taint. But besides the cork taint, we can have, um, for example, a volatile acidity that might be uh, too high because so, uh, a small amount of volatile acidity is okay in the wine, but too high will become a fault. A, a reduction can be a fault that will be aroma, for example, of rotten eggs um, in your wine. Oxidation can be a fault as well. So okay, right here, you're checking, is my wine clean? or unclean. If it is unclean, you're trying to get down to the bottom of it and find out what kind of wine vault do I have in a glass. If you still cannot name it, look through your WCT Level 3 book. You'll find all the descriptors there that will help you to learn, to study um, those wine faults and eventually to recognize them in the glass. Uh, then from here, we're go moving on to intensity. And now, just like I told you before, take a look. Where uh, is the aroma starting? Is it starting here? That will be your pronounce. If you're bringing your glass closer to the nose, that will be your medium. And then within that medium, at level three, we have a medium minus and a medium plus. So you're, you're kind of starting to, to judge in between. You're moving that knowledge you get for at level two and you're trying to see, is it, are those aromas less or more pronounced within that medium? Then if you, you already started smelling your wine right there, that is pronounced and my wine is pronounced um, and this is a point I'm going to get at the exam so intensity is important for you to get a point. Then we have aroma characteristics. At a level three you are looking at five points for aroma characteristics and very important thing now for you to understand that you have to break those down into three groups. We call them primary, secondary, and tertiary aromas. And what you see in front of you is the systematic approach to tasting level at level three. But if you would turn that card to the other side, you will be uh, you will find that those descriptors of aromas are divided into precisely three groups on the other side. So once you get your book, you will also get um, uh, this uh, systematic approach to tasting laminated so you can work with it. And once you take a look at the primary, secondary and tertiary aroma, you, have, you need to have an understanding of how to break them down. So primary aroma come from fruit, but kind of primary aroma come from fermentation as well. Secondary comes come from post-fermentation, so that can be oak influence, that can be lease aging, uh, that can be malolactic fermentation. And then tertiary aroma come from um, aging, they come from oxidation. Um, and once you divide those two, three groups, you will have a good understanding of what happened to the wine in the wine making process. So this is another learning experience for you. So when I'm looking uh, at this wine, when I'm smelling this wine, I actually have all three groups uh, of aromas and I find primary, secondary, and tertiary aromas. And from primary, I find apricot, peach, baked apple, pineapple, candied, orange, orange marmalade, marmalade, mayor, lemon, honeysuckle, and orange blossom. So you see, it's pronounced aroma, and I can already, in primary, find a lot on the nose. Then in secondary, I do find the toast, vanilla, caramel, uh, pastry, butterscotch, and in tertiary, uh, marzipan, queens, hazelnut, honey, mushrooms. So all of that gives me an overview of the wine. Now from here I'm moving to development. Um, when the wine is youthful, you will mainly um, smell primary aromas, 
um, maybe some secondary, but the primaries will be uh, will, will be overwhelming. Will you feel that freshness in you? Or why? Then we're moving to developing. Well, we have uh, primary aromas. We may or may not have the secondary. It always depends on the style of wine. But some tertiary aromas are coming in already. But primary aromas are above tertiary aromas. Then we have fully developed wines. And fully developed wines will majorly have tertiary aromas, may include, depending on winemaking style, the secondary aromas, and may or you may not have any uh, of the primary aromas. So, and tired past its best will not only ha have tertiary aromas alone, but it will actually lose its freshness. It will lo lose the the car fresh character of the fruit. It can be uh, flabby. So that is the wine that you don't want to drink anymore. So development of this wine is developing. Then when we're moving to the palate, and when we're moving to the palate, I would like you to take a sip, make sure you put your wine um, around your uh, full mouth, so you, you will so squish your wine around your mouth, and I will use the spittoon, and I encourage you to, use, uh, to using the spittoon as well. So how do I judge the sweetness? Sweetness, you're going to judge based on what you feel uh, uh, for a systematic approach to tasting, not precisely, uh, not only based on any um, uh, residual sugar content that you would check in laboratory. So this wine is sweet. Uh, and uh, when, uh, when the wine is dry, you pretty much don't feel any sweetness uh, on your tongue. With off dry, you can feel some of the residual sugar, but uh, but you, the wine will finish uh, dry. With medium dry, that sweetness notion will be higher, but will, will still be balanced uh, with the acidity. With medium sweet, uh, you could you could already think okay, okay this wine could be served with the dessert but the that uh, as, um, the acidity here and the level of uh, sugar residual sugar is still not allowing me to put that um, in the sweet category and the sweet category is like when, once you get the sweet wine that can be paired uh, with the dessert that will balance the sweetness with the dessert this is your sweet your sweet wine uh, uh, examples I'll show you uh, at the end because I don't want to give away what this wine is because uh, I want you to, to take your options but now the lashes lashes is what we would find in lusciously sweet wines that come with extremely high residual sugar level, and those will be, for example, Pedro Ximenez um, uh, Sherry uh, or Ruth Glen Muscat. Then we're moving to acidity. So we have a sweet wines, and what balances sweetness is the acidity. So if you're looking at the sweet wines, you always want to check what is my acidity level. Very often students will uh, will say low uh, because that sweetness is so overwhelming, they don't taste the acidity. Check back with how much saliva you're producing. The focus on that very notion alone, and you will see, for example, like in this one, that the acidity is high. Very often will be from medium to high. The more refreshing the sweet one is, the higher the acidity is. When we're discussing white wines, we're going to skip tannins um, at this level, and then we're going to move to alcohol. Uh, important thing to understand here, and I see that uh, some students don't, uh, don't always check back with that, we do look at the uh, alcohol level, however, they, some of the wines may feel uh, hotter than um, others, then the alcohol level is showing. But the general rule here is below 11, we have low alcohol wine mediums from 11 to 13.9 and above uh, 14, it is high. It is different for 45 wines, and keep that in mind as well. But this wine has a high level of alcohol. Then we're moving to body. 
and body constitutes of several structural components um, of the wine. So uh, if we're looking at sweetness, the more sweetness you have, the higher the body, the fuller the body. Uh, the more tannins, if you have the red wines, um, the higher the tannins, however, it depends what kind of tannins do you have. If you, if you do have uh, tannins that is ripe, it will add to the bad. Then alcohol, alcohol also adds to body um, and intensity of flavors will, will also add to that notion of body. However, acidity or astringent uh, uh, tannins will bring the body down. So in this case, there is a full body wine in my glass. Then from here, we're moving to the uh, flavor intensity. Of course, for this wine, this is a still wine, so we're skipping the most flavor intensity. And in this case, this is also pronounced. Another good tip to give you here to understand the intensity. Intensity for most of the wines, it is alike between the nose and the palate. In some cases, it may be off of for one, so let's say um, uh, it was uh, it was medium plus for one uh, for the nose, and then it will be pronounced for the palate. Usually, it is higher for the palate. If there's a difference, uh, it will be higher. There are several factors that can influence that, including the alcohol. So this is also a pronounced intensity of flavors. From here, we're moving to flavor characteristic, and you have only three points here. So remember, we're discussing five points on the nose, and uh, I haven't mentioned that, so I'll mention it now, that a very important fear for you here to understand is that if you have primary, secondary, and tertiary aromas and flavors, you have to name one for each group, from each group to get the point. If you don't, you will miss a point. So if this wine has primary, secondary, and tertiary aromas, you have to make sure that you will name one from each group in order to get all three points. If you're only going to call primary aromas uh, in a wine that has secondary and tertiary, you will only get one single um, point. And you want to collect as many points as you can because you want to pass a distinction level, right? So do keep that in mind. I very often see the notes from the students where they will write a lot on primary aromas and skip secondary or tertiary, and they will miss a point here. For this particular wine palette is very much alike um, as a nose. So I do get the, that uh, apricot uh, peach aromas, but I also get the uh, orange marmalade. I do get some vanilla. I do get the oak influence in this wine. Um, and uh, I do get some baked apples, um, uh, mushrooms in the flavor. So that Make sure when you're writing your note, give us more, write more. Don't stick to those five or three. I always tell my students, write at least seven flavors of aromas, if you can. If you have a simple wine, you may struggle with that. But if you have wine like this, you don't have to struggle. You can just write a whole symphony of words here. So please use that, um, use this time to give us more information to write full note here. So from uh, flavor characteristics, we're going to the finish. And finish is how, how long the wine, but the positive notion in the wine is staying in your mouth. So extremely important thing to understand that we're not talking about sweetness alone. We're not talking about acidity alone. On top of those, and actually not even on top, you should take them away and you're thinking of positive notion of flavor that you, flavors that you're tasting and how long are they staying. You know, um, uh, there are different techniques of, uh, of judging the finish. One of them that helps students um, at times is to count. You know, so, uh, well, one of the teachers here says, uh, so calls it as Mississippi, so you can count one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, all the way to five, and that will give you, uh, a five will give you at least uh, a long finish. I have tasted mine already, and I know this is a wine with a long finish. Um, so if you're not sure about the finish, you may want to use that technique, but do remember that each palette, palette of uh, each student is different. 
So you have to find your own technique uh, at the end to judge the finish. Um, so we're finishing up with the long finish for this wine. And the last important thing uh, at the level three is conclusion. And this is a very important thing for you to understand that uh, very often students will write the note and they will write beautiful note and at the end they say, they, it's like they forget everything and say, hey, I don't like this wine. And they misjudge it and say it's good or acceptable where the note is clearly saying either very good or outstanding. So. You have to buckle up your personal preference and put it on the side. And you're going back at this point to your note and you're reading, what did you write on the nose, on the palette? And you're making a call based on what we call blick, balance, length, intensity, um, complexity. And there's uh, uh, one, one more po point here, expressiveness, because if wine is expressive of the style, this is also important. Um, and your bleak will tell you the quality of wine. And once you are going to assess the bleak and assess each one of those points, we actually, uh, just, just, just to make it fairly simple, we'll give you bleak and we'll give you four points. So, so let's say you get a point for balance, you get a point for uh, uh, length, intensity um, and complexity. And if you will give um, a, a pronounce or long for all of those, or you are in a, that medium plus camp, uh, you will be looking at getting the point for Blake and you will get to the conclusion, like I did with this wine, because it's beautifully balanced between the acidity and sweetness. It is actually still refreshing with the level of sweetness I have. It, is, it does have a long lasting um, finish. Um, it has pronounced intensity uh, of flavors and it is complex. How do I know it's complex? This uh, question uh, often comes up from students. Well, if you are able to name a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of groups of aromas, a lot of clusters from all primary, secondary and tertiary, this is your complex wines. But you may, in some styles of wine, have only primary. So you're looking, is my primary, are my primaries coming from one cluster alone, or they actually are coming from several clusters? If they come from several clusters, then you may have a complex wine, but with primary aromas um, uh, or flavors alone. So this is another important thing to remember when it comes to complexity. So I have an outstanding wine in my glass. And then the last thing that I'm going to judge, it's a level of readiness for drinking and potential for aging. So the wine can be too young. Uh, we don't get too young uh, wines very often on the market. Why? Because today's winemakers prepare the wines the way and send the wines to the market in a way that they are drinkable, um, usually at release. There are only a few examples of wines that you that you would get as too young. Generally, you won't see that on the um, on the exam. So then you look at the two categories that you highly likely will get in your exam, which can be can't drink now but has potential for aging, or drink now. Uh, not suitable for aging or further aging. And here's a very important thing for uh, exams, because I see that often on an exam, that students will write, can drink now. This will get you zero points. You don't get a point for that. You have to finish that sentence. sentence. So you have to say, but has potential for aging, or it's not suitable for aging or further aging. So this wine that I have in glass, um, has potential for aging. How do I know that? Well, first of all, it has a high juicy acidity, and this is one of those factors uh, that uh, that will make this wine live longer. It also has a high level of sweetness that is balanced with that acidity. But if I'm looking at the primary, secondary, and tertiary aromas, I still see a lot of primary aromas in this wine, which is another indicator. This wine can be fantastic in the next decade and will be positively changing in the next decade.
So now that you know what the wine is, I'm going to read to you uh, what, what was my note, and I would like you to write down uh, in uh, in the chat box underneath what do you think this wine is. So appearance is medium gold. It uh, the wine has pronounced intensity of aromas, showing primary, secondary and tertiary aromas, and those primaries are um, apricot, peach, candied orange, and marmalade, mayor, lemon, honey, honeysuckle, orange blossom, ginger, and saffron. For secondary, I have toast, vanilla, caramel, and butter, scotch, pastry, and brioche, and for tertiary, marzipan, kins, uh, paste, dried yellow apples, mushrooms, dry lemon, and honey. It is a developing wine, it is sweet wine with high acidity, high alcohol, full body, um, pronounced flavor intensity uh, with the uh, primary uh, flavors again of the orange marmalade, baked apples, pineapple, lemon, secondary toast and vanilla, and tertiary multiple queens, uh, dried yellow apples and mushrooms. Uh, and this is outstanding quality wine with potential for aging. I see some of your notes uh, see, uh, and I see somebody writes saffron, which is uh, equals botrytis. Yes. So let, let me tell you now, if you haven't decided what this could be, what are your tips? The saffrons, the mushrooms, the candy, orange peels are your indicators, are your helpers to, to assess that this, um, uh, that this is a botrytis affected wine. Uh, you know that the wine is sweet and that it has high acidity. I see somebody put up a talk I hear. Uh, one, one, of those, um, one of those things that will differentiate this wine is, are, are the secondary aromas and flavors that are including the vanilla. Uh, and that is an indication of oak aging. This is another thing to look for when you're trying to figure out what the wine is. And I see a few, uh, few people now uh, showing up what the wine is, including um, Jennifer and uh, Katarzyna. Yes, it is a Sautern. Sautern will have a higher alcohol, uh, will have the um, influence of oak. Often Sauternes, uh, uh, for, for in a production of Sautern, we will use a percentage um, of new oak and that will make a difference. Uh, Tokai uh, usually has that zesty, uh, juicy acidity um, that comes uh, from ferment and will not have that much of the um, uh, of the aromas um, uh, uh, of the uh, uh, well the sweetness will be there but the acidity will be higher will be just in what have aromas of oak that will be so pronounced as in Sautern. And another thing, they, somebody put the uh, Inniskilling, and when it comes to the ice vine, you will not get the Botrytis notes. So that would be another difference here in uh, the ice vine. Uh, berries for ice vine generally are in Botrytis. Well, thank you so much. What I'm going to show you now, I'm going to show you what the wine was. This is actually a wine that we're using for our level three wine kit, because uh, with level three now we're offering uh, wine samples so you can taste along with our tutors. And this was a Castelnau de Sudiro uh, 2010 Sautern. So you did see that age in the color. You see that indication of aging also with the tertiary aromas um, on the nose and at uh, uh, and on the palate. Wine had 14% alcohol. That's why we considered it high alcohol um, as well. So thank you so much. Uh, see you in the next uh, study hall. Prepare for your exam. If you have questions to us, write to us. We're always happy to help you on your journey to study wines. Thank you. Great. Well, thanks so much, Monica. Thanks, everyone, for joining us this Wednesday. And uh, make sure to check us back out uh, on Monday. We have a trivia, a new trivia game, uh, and we'll have some details on um, how that's going to be working on our Facebook page uh, as well. And we will have another study hall here on Wednesday. In the meantime, stay safe, drink well, 
and thanks so much for joining us. Cheers.